Okay, Itamex Kanatoni, good morning. It is Saturday, August 4th, 2018, in the lunar cycle Okonokist's Otsitsitsu, when the Saskatoon berries ripen. And surprise, surprise, we got no skunk calls this morning. <laughs> Skunks are quiet. It's kind of an overcast day. Um, I do have a couple of things on my agenda. Right now, I'm headed over to that house where I've picked up skunks all week. I've, got, I've taken four juvenile skunks from the side of that house that are living under her stairwell there and no skunks went in last night so we're thinking maybe it's time to uh, close up the stairwell but I have been using small traps there so I'm gonna go put a big trap there overnight just in case mama's still around and I've actually got my scope with me too so I'm gonna try to take a quick quick peek under the stairs um, and see if I can see anything but yeah if we don't catch anything overnight and there's nothing on my scope then probably I think she's okay to fill that hole um, then after that I am going to go over to the canyons to deliver a uh, king snake got a king snake in the back seat here with me <laughs> uh, this one was forfeited to me um, from someone who, who just can't, is not allowed to keep it anymore because the, of a landlord situation. So I got it, I got it given to me with all, with the whole setup, the tank and, you know, um, heat pad, heat lamp, um, timed heat lamp and all that jazz, uh, it was just turned, just given to me. So I in turn am rehoming it because I, I have plenty of snakes, uh, to work with as, as co-educators <laughs> at my place. I don't really need a any more. So um, I looked, I did a little search through my Rattlesnakes at Lethbridge Facebook page for potential adoptees. And there is a 12 year old girl who has a couple of snakes and is a reptile enthusiast and would like to take care of this one too. And um, so we're gonna go deliver it to her. All right, I think probably we're safe because these gaps don't really look big enough to support Mama anyway. So she's probably not really living under here. But um, maybe the babies were just enjoying stopping by and visiting. Um, the resident said that her neighbor has a nest cam and was not able to see mama on the nest cam coming around just the babies but some of the other neighbors have seen mama um down this way down the, at another residence so yeah probably we're good to go for her but i'm just going to check in here really quick All right, yeah, I'm just seeing concrete and stone under here, so it might be all right. I'll check this other little area here. Uh, it's not really. Nothing really turned up in the scope for that. All right. So we'll just set up a big trap here and we'll see what happens overnight. Probably we're gonna catch nothing. Probably my work here is done. So this is this is the king snake here. So she's gonna get a stand built for it and it'll be here. But she's got a little collection going on. You wanna okay. you wanna tell me about your collection? <laughs> Who all you got? I see I see a lizard. <laughs> what kind of lizard is this? Just talk with. So that's a leopard gecko. Leopard gecko, hey. Yeah, that's a male. 
So does he actually gecko out and climb the walls and everything? No. He doesn't look no, like he's got sticky don't, pads. Those guys don't climb the walls. Yeah. Go over and you got a milk snake somewhere it's about? Yeah, Let's see. Yeah, you're going to want to get another one of these locks for that because that front, that's why the, the glass is taped on either side because oh, okay. that lock doesn't really oh, gotcha. lock right. Oh, pretty. Look at that. a nice looking snake. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take him out, Clint? See if it's going to come out. Very nice. Mm -hmm. like, no, now I want back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very pretty. So how did you get into reptiles? It's <laughs> a quiet interviewer. <laughs> no worries. That's awesome. So you got some you got some little fish here. These are are these some little river minnows? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I used to do that too. I used to go grab <laughs> minnows and stuff at the river. And then we got another gecko here, huh? Is that the same same type but just a different color yeah. version? Yeah. Color more right on. You got another snake here, eh? Just a little guy. So this is a corn snake? Yeah. Very cute. This is a this is a one year old, hey? Yeah. Very nice. Right on. Well you got a nice little collection. <laughs> <laughs> this guy will enjoy his, his care. It's always nice to know he's gonna have a you know good place with someone that really wants to take care of snakes. Yeah. So this is the next animal who I'm looking to rehome. This is a magpie, a fledgling magpie, um, born this year. And if you watch my videos, you saw me probably saw me pick him up. Mahoney and I went to go get him. He was in a schoolyard, and just couldn't seem to get off the literal ground, you know. So we brought him, brought him here, and um, he's been kind of just living here on top of this large parrot enclosure ever since. I'm not giving away the um, <laughs> the enclosure, just the bird. You'll need a, you'll need a parrot cage. Uh, it doesn't have to be this giant or anything like that, but you'll need a decent sized bird cage for him. And, um, and he likes to just sit in front of a window, look out the window, talk to other birds. He's used to having people around. He's used to having other animals around, other birds um, and uh, dogs. And he's not tame, tame, but you know he's not. He doesn't panic when I'm here, you know, at his at his enclosure. He's he's a little nervous, um, but I haven't tried to hand tame him or anything like that. I think he could be hand tamed. I mean, he's not too far away from from doing that, but it would take someone needs to take some time with him. But in either case, he's a really nice bird, right? So all you all you really need to do for him is have him a have him a good enclosure some window exposure so you can see the world and uh, feed him and give him water and stuff and he's quite content you know he doesn't like to fly I don't think he'll ever be rewilded I don't know what's you know he didn't have a, an obvious injury when we picked him up but he's never enjoyed flying he can fly a little bit like he can fly from here to the closet or here to the fan he sometimes goes and sits on top of my fan but he doesn't want to leave this room even though he sees the other magpies doing it and even though, you know, the crow's room is just across the way, he can see them over there. Uh, he's never gone to, to kind of explore things. And I don't know if he, I don't know if he ever will develop that and wanna, wanna get around a little bit more. So yeah, anybody who's interested in um, taking care of a magpie long-term, hit me up, 
let me know and I've got I've got a bird for you I've got a I've got a friend for you for the next 25 years or so it's a commitment it's a commitment so you got to be ready for that but um, they are really good pets magpies I have a couple of them and they're they're very social and uh, extremely smart and real characters too naughty <laughs> This guy's not naughty though. This guy's this guy's pretty uh, pretty quiet. Keeps to himself. Sings a little bit, you know. Makes some calls and stuff. He really likes the morning the morning routine where the birds outside come to to visit my feeder and all the birds inside too are calling back and forth to them and he gets into that. So yeah, let me know. Um, I definitely have to find him another home because I want to keep lots of room here for being able to take in other injured birds and help them. All right, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon now and I got my first snake call of the day. This one is going to be down in the river bottom of Paradise Canyon, um, the neighborhoods adjacent to the golf course. I guess someone was walking home from the uh, golf resort and in the first cul-de-sac over from the golf course there was a rattlesnake on the sidewalk and so rushing the crowd was almost as far away as i could be in lethbridge <laughs> when i got this call and i thought i wasn't going to get one until maybe this evening but here we go <laughs> yeah we might not find this snake nobody stuck around to to keep an eye on it um this is the cul-de-sac where it was reported being on the sidewalk. It hasn't been, but you know, probably under 10 minutes for us to get here. This particular residence here, I have picked up rattlesnakes from before, so that's why I decided to just intrude upon their lawn here and see if I can see anybody around. It's probably gone on its way. You know, can access the coolies pretty quick here. Or it could be in this brush. <laughs> Just very well hidden. Did you say which direction it was headed? No, they just said it was in this cul-de-sac on the sidewalk, so no luck. Maybe we'll just drive down the road a little bit, but probably we're not gonna find it. You okay? Alright, so it's evening time now, just about six o'clock and I'm way down here in what we call the Muff, which is a uh, kind of a Lethbridge famous mountain bike trail. But, you know, it's also a trail followed by pedestrians, um, like myself. And I'm down here tonight actually to harvest some imetochkatsi, some dog's toes. <laughs> um, the fairy bell, fairy bell berry, is what I'm after down here, and there's quite a bit of it that grows down here in the muff. Um, we've got a, a bit of kind of cooler, I mean, not really cold or anything, but overcast weather, some threatening storm type of weather, and so I figured I'm halfway safe coming down into the coulee and not having to worry about another snake call, but we'll see if that pans out. I might end up having to like, run up the side of the coulee um, to get to my vehicle and running up the side of the coulee always sucks <laughs> uh, but anyway yeah this is this is what I'm after here right here I think the reason that you know in Blackfoot these berries are called dog's feet or dog's toes is because um, the texture of the berry itself um, it's reminiscent of the texture of the pad of a dog's toe you know <laughs> something like that I think now, I could be way off base but uh, that's the only connection I can make with that with the with the language of it um, until I hear otherwise that's what I think is going on <laughs> but they're really delicious berries um the flesh they are seedy like they got a lot of seeds um 
but the flesh is delicious and I look forward to them every year so I just come down here and pick some keep them in my fridge and when I run out come pick some more they should be good for the next probably three or four weeks out here um, and pretty much in every you know in the bottom of every one of our coolie draws it's like this it's all lush and there's a lot of plant life a lot of different plant life um, it's just that the muff here is actually carved out so you can walk through it easily usually it's so dense with choke cherries and other berry trees and stuff that it's very difficult to get through the bottom of most coolie draws so this is really nice and you know the little bit of sunlight that streams through might help these kind of like um to develop the way that they do here i don't know but there's a lot there's a lot of them there's you know tons of tons of berries to be had <laughs> And there's other good stuff going on out here right now too. Lots of other, you know, choke cherries and Saskatoons, um, currants. Sa the Saskatoons are almost played out, but there's still lots of currants, and the choke cherries are just getting to season. So we'll be talking about those one of my future videos. And what else? There's even you know there's vegetable foods like there's this burdock. A lot of people know this burdock is. Um, wild rhubarb but in fact it's not rhubarby at all and you don't want to eat that leaf or that stem however the root is a really good vegetable root if you get it before it sends up a, a seed stalk once it sends up a seed stalk like like anything else that once it flowers the roots get pretty uh they get pretty stringy pretty fibrous really not palatable anyway um i'm gonna harvest some more and then make my way back up and we'll see whether or not we got any more calls this evening.